Uwu. Sus sus among us Fortnite balls. Nani? Hey Putin, say hello to my little friend. Those were just a few of the thousands of messages written on the side of artillery shells and rockets fired at the Russian army in Ukraine, courtesy of SignMyRocket.com. SignMyRocket.com is a website run by the Ukrainian-based NGO, the Army Assistance Center, which was founded in 2014, shortly after the Russian annexation of Crimea, in order to gather money and resources for the Ukrainian military. What they gather for the military is extensive and includes things like camouflage equipment, plate carriers, optics, radio and communication systems, first aid kits, medicine, vehicle, and much more. Not only do they raise the funds and gather the equipment, but they also manage the logistics behind delivering it all, including delivering it to military units, some of which are engaged in active combat. SignMyRocket.com was started by Anton Sokolenko as a way for the Army Assistance Center to fundraise money for this vital equipment. The method used to fundraise is extremely unorthodox. SignMyRocket.com offers to write any message of your choosing, within reason, on shells that are fired at the Russian army. These deadly pieces of hate mail can be sent from anyone around the globe, as long as you're able to pay the price. The base price is $200 for a 155 millimeter shell to carry your message of malice. But there are so many more options if you're willing to pay a little bit more to the death dealing postman. For $500 more, you can write your lethal letter on a GPS guided M982 Excalibur extended rage artillery shell. And for $800 more, you can even send one of your postages of death on the famous high Mars rockets that have torn Russian logistics to shreds. The options are endless with the top one being $20,000 to have one of your messages on the side of a MiG-29 fighter jet. You could even ask for the message to be sent by a specific date, with websites suggesting a birthday or anniversary message. This advice has been taken by some lovebirds, like Colin Smith from Dallas, Texas, who has spent over $3,000 on the website and gave his wife a picture of a signed artillery shell with their initials on it. The same man also tried to debate his wife into letting him spend another thousands upon thousands of dollars on being able to name a T-72 tank. I would love to be a fly on the wall for that dinner table conversation. It's not that surprising that people are donating so much money though, since the whole process has been streamlined. You can pay for any of these endless options using PayPal, credit cards, or even Bitcoin. Even the button to pay has been emblazoned with the word FIRE as if to symbolize your money directly vaporizing the invading Moscovite. No matter your personal opinion on the optics or morality of allowing foreign donors to decorate payloads before their journey to their final deadly destination, this streamlining has worked. SignMyRocket.com has been able to raise over $1.4 million through signing shells, rockets, and other munitions. This is an astonishing amount of money and this operation deserves our attention. I wanted to get to the bottom of this killer posted service, so I met up with a local translator in Kiev and got on a bus towards the city of Cherkasy in central Ukraine, where the postman of this website, Anton Sokolenko, was operating out of. Calling it a bus, though, was generous and honestly kind of misleading. The city had buses, but this was just a large van that we crammed ourselves into like sardines. It didn't help that I hadn't gotten any sleep the night before, which meant I was passing in and out of consciousness to the sound of screeching techno pop music that seemed to clog the airwaves of most Ukrainian radio stations. Once we finally got to Cherkasy, it didn't take us long to find Anton, but I was surprised to find that he was not the burly and bearded 30-something Ukrainian man in camo I was expecting him to be which was the type I had been working with for the last few weeks in eastern Ukraine. Instead, it was a tall, slender 22-year-old IT student. I didn't expect the person running Sign My Rocket, which was essentially decorating weapons that blow people up for donations, to be so young or tech-savvy. It reminded me of the story of a 15-year-old Ukrainian teenager who during the early days of the invasion tracked Russian troops advancing on Kiev with his personal drone before handing over coordinates to the Ukrainian military so they could strike the military columns. It was just another personal reminder that every aspect of Ukrainian society is engaged in resistance in one way or another. After sitting down with Anton, he started to paint a picture of how this operation came to be. Imagine this. 
You're a 21 year old IT student in college when your entire world is thrown upside down. You just found out the shocking news that the Russians are marching on Kiev and are attempting to occupy the entire country, including the community you grew up in, in the largest wave of violence since the Russians first invaded in 2014. You and many others in Cherkasy, as well as those all across the country, spring into action. You start preparing Molotov cocktails with other local residents as you all prepare for possible street by street fighting. After loading countless truckloads full of bottled fire, you decide to further commit yourself to the Ukrainian resistance by suspending your educational endeavors in order to free up more time to volunteer. You spend this new free time volunteering for the Army Assistance Center because it's based locally in your community, their volunteers put their life on the line making deliveries to the front line, and they are directly contributing equipment to the military standing between your city and the Russian occupation. This is the situation that Anton found himself in when he stumbled upon a unique fundraising strategy on Telegram. Anton had a Telegram account that reposted footage from the war and had garnered a following. While managing that account, he found people fundraising for supplies by selling signed shells for $40 a shell on social media. This isn't the first time people wrote on shells, bombs, or projectiles that are used in battle. In fact, this has been a pretty common practice in the history of warfare. 300 years before Jesus Christ was born, ancient Greek slingers threw lead stones with the word catch at the enemy. In the more modern history of warfare, soldiers have written messages on shells in World War I, World War II, and even the American War on Terror. Mind you that this wasn't the only weapon or equipment that soldiers decorated. Warplanes like the A-10 attack aircraft have been decorated with shark teeth. Soldiers in Vietnam often decorated their helmets, which became a staple for the war. Quick caveat about one strange example from the American invasion in Afghanistan. One month after the September 11th attacks on the World Trade Center, on October 11th, 2001, the USS Enterprise, a US Navy aircraft carrier, was prepping an F-18 Hornet for a combat mission in Afghanistan. That's when a photographer took a picture of the jet, which was loaded with a bomb that had the words, hijack this fags, written on it. This caused immediate backlash from the LGBT community and NGOs. The Associated Press, who published the photo, and the United States Navy apologized for it shortly after. The most interesting part of the story, to me personally, is the Wikipedia article about this photo is simply titled, The F***ing Bomb. Point is, even if using these deadly messages to fundraise is new, the practice of covering munitions with serious, funny, or even offensive messages goes back thousands of years in the history of warfare. After seeing other volunteers continue this military tradition and successfully use the graffiti shells to fundraise, Anton decided to give this unusual fundraising method a try. He started by posting a listing on his somewhat sizable social media page for people to make donations in order to have soldiers sign landmines with a custom message. As the money started to roll in, however, the operation exploded. Soon, people could donate money not just to have shells graffiti, but rockets, drones, jets, and even a tank. A website was created. The website had a slick interface and UI, which if only given a passing glance, could easily be mistaken as a weapons marketplace. The donations started to flood in, and the messages requested were all over the place. Some are serious, and some are for celebratory events like holidays. For example, Happy Father's Day messages were particularly popular among American donors. Some went much further and used the service to express their explosive passion for their sweethearts by proposing marriage through artillery shell. A lot of these donated messages are quite on the silly side. GG, sorry for the gun kill. Please add me to your LinkedIn network. Cure for Putin's Ligma. Do you think your wife will let her boyfriend drive the new Lada? Brutal. By the way, according to Anton, one of the most common donation messages was, and I mean this unironically, uwu which would have obviously been confusing for the soldiers writing these messages. And uh, some funny memes like Uwu that made us popular. Uwu? Yeah, Uwu <laughs> meme. One of the ones that made me double take the most was the messages purchased in honor of former Queen Elizabeth of England, Queen Elizabeth II, after she passed away in 2022. I'm sure that's what she would have wanted. Despite how vulgar and aggressive some of the donated funny bombs are, there are limits to what kind of messages can be donated. 
Anton explained that outside of the obvious anti-Putin and anti-invasion phrases, political messages are banned. Anton gave examples, like when he refused pretty aggressive political messages about Israel and China. We had uh, a few messages that were against uh, any rules, because uh, one guy asked, I'd better land in Tel Aviv, which is impossible to read on the show, right on the show. Mm. And uh, some bad words about uh, the Chinese leader. Xi Jinping? Yes. The majority of these donated messages were not coming from locals in Ukraine, but like Anton described, they came from all around the world. From Dallas, Texas, to the United Kingdom, to Tokyo, Japan, to Taipei, Taiwan, Ukrainian soldiers were writing down messages, some of them funny, some of them completely unrecognizable to themselves, from foreigners across the globe. What these donors did not share in proximity, they shared in their commitment to see Ukrainians beat back the invasion. The reasons these donors had for dropping these lovely care packages are plentiful. Many sympathize with the Ukrainian cause for continued independence. Whether it was through friends, family, or more often than not, the internet, they had heard about the struggle going on in Ukraine. They had heard about the butchering that went on in Bucha at the hands of Russian soldiers, or Izium, or any other number of countless cities and towns that had seen the worst the Russian occupation had to offer. Maybe one of those displaced by the invasion had told them of some of the horrors they had seen firsthand. It could have been any number of gruesome videos they had seen online of executions, torture, and even castration. Others have been following the war since February 24th of 2022 and have been watching Ukrainian politics develop since they gained their long-desired independence after the collapse of the Soviet Union. They had watched as Ukrainian activists had put their lives and safety on the line time and time again in the advancement of Ukrainian democracy. Whether it was the Orange Revolution, the Revolution of Dignity, also known as the Euromaidan, or any other number of pro-democracy and anti-corruption political movements. Those international backers watched on in disgust as those movements were attacked by government-hired Tatushki gangsters and the Bagut Special Forces. When those failed to make the protesters submit, the Russian military invaded, clawing and scratching for nine years in an attempt to preserve the old political order which had lost its mandate. After so much effort and sacrifice in the 30 years since Ukrainian independence and the advancement of Ukrainian civil society, the last thing they want is that old order to be re-established through occupation, especially since Ukraine has enough problems trying to reform and strengthen institutions further as it is. I must address another type of killer postage enthusiast, which should be more obvious due to the silly donated messages written on many of the shells. War is a very serious business, a business that takes sons, brothers, and fathers away from the dinner table. There is nothing funny about a child growing up without a father. The pain for many never goes away and can only be truly known by those who experience it firsthand. So to some, it can seem quite morbid for people who are possibly thousands of miles away who are not experiencing the war firsthand to write jokes and internet memes on shells used in work where friends literally die in your arms. Rationalizing this reality with the fact that there is a non-zero chance that a Russian soldier was killed by an uwu bomb can be quite difficult. Was this tasteless and morbid comedy or good fun in the name of Ukrainian independence? This was the question I wanted to put forward to Anton. If somebody was to say like, oh, this is somewhat distasteful to like write these funny memes on these weapons and explosives, what would you say to that? About signing shells? Yeah. Uh, I don't personally care about such people, so don't uh, don't order the sign. No one cares. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> okay then. <laughs>Anton's response might be blunt, but it gets to the point. It's not hard to figure out why he wouldn't care what dissenters would say about Sign My Rocket, not only because it has proven itself to be an effective fundraising tactic, but also due to his personal experience, along with tens of millions of other Ukrainians on the receiving end of this war. Difficulty allowing moral outrage to dominate your conscience over jokes being written on bombs that those on the receiving end won't even be able to read anyway is easy to understand. The moral outrage can also feel somewhat contrived or fabricated, possibly uninformed, 
when considering how far back in history this military tradition goes. While the fundraising aspect and the accessibility to civilians is new, the signing itself goes all the way back before the birth of Jesus Christ. As I discussed earlier, this practice and different variations has been going on for thousands of years. Now, when Ukraine is being invaded by what is supposedly the second most powerful military in the world is when righteousness strikes the hearts of cursory observers. Then again, just because human beings practice this for a long time does not necessarily make the tradition moral. I'm also an American. Maybe us Yanks have just been so desensitized to the violence that permeates throughout our culture and the commercialization of said violence that it's impossible for me to not think like a Grand Theft Auto character. Once the interview finished, Anton wanted to show off the Army Assistance Center. He started by showing me multiple war trophies he had lying around from soldiers who had come back from the front line. This included both spent Ukrainian and Russian shoulder-mounted rocket launchers, which Anton lamented not being able to ship to donors internationally. He showed off more equipment, like a Russian helmet and military bag that was captured from the enemy. The current status of its previous owner is unknown. I was shown the volunteers around the facility who made it function. There were many elderly volunteers who were helping to make camouflage nets for the military. Those managing the medicine were eager to tell me tales about the bravery of the local tank brigade formed in Cherkasy, whose patch had a rhino on it. My translator suggested to me that this was meant to represent the stubbornness of the people from Cherkasy. The volunteer in the room reiterated the stubbornness, saying the soldiers from the area are very stubborn, to the obvious relief of my translator, who probably didn't want to offend the locals. After Anton finished showing me around, me, Anton, and my translator decided to go to McDonald's. Whether or not this was chosen because they liked McDonald's and was happy to see it return to the country, which it did recently, or this was to make the Amerifat feel at home, I don't know. The conversation we had while getting food was pretty laid back, but there is one moment I want to highlight that impacted my perspective of the entire operation. While walking to McDonald's, Anton expressed to me how sometimes he wished something would happen in Cherkasy to shake people awake concerning the war. Being located in central Ukraine, the people have avoided Russian occupation and the worst of Russian bombing. While he obviously saw this as a positive, he also believed that this isolation from the worst aspects of the Russian terror campaign led some people into a false sense of security. He wants to see more people get involved in volunteering, and I could really feel his sense of duty to his community and country as he spoke about the need for Ukrainians to get involved. The intentions behind Anton's operation and the cause that money is being raised for is righteous in my view. This tradition of signing projectiles in warfare is nothing new. The only aspect of this that breaks with tradition is the level of accessibility to the average person. Instead of this only being reserved for active duty military, as it was historically, now those who sympathize with Ukraine's underdog story from all corners of the globe can contribute towards the dispatches of lethal correspondence. Does it matter that this practice is no longer restricted by enlistment status? Does the righteousness of the Ukrainian cause make me overlook the commercialization of violence too easily? Personally, the motives behind the project, the history of the long-standing tradition, and knowing it all goes towards a worthy struggle makes me think this is a worthwhile undertaking. It doesn't really matter what I think, though. No matter what anyone thinks, even the Kremlin itself can't stop these Ukrainians from finding new and innovative ways to carry out resistance efforts. The future of this bizarre tradition as old as warfare itself is here, and is available to anyone willing to donate. So, do you have a message to send? Before we wrap up, I want to thank the Army Assistance Center for opening its doors to me and my many patrons on Patreon that make my work possible. Lastly, while I was interviewing Anton, one of the other aid workers asked if I would record her testimony about why she is involved in aid work at the Army Assistance Center. I found that listening to people directly is the best way to communicate their perspective. So, I'll let her wrap the story up. Доброго дня, мене звати Оксана Цигнук. Я голова громадської організації Центр допомоги армії ветеранам та їхнім родинам. Ми волонтери об'єдналися в громадську організацію ще 9 років тому, тому що у нас почалася війна, на нас напала Російська Федерація, і ми відстоюємо свою незалежність. Воюємо за волю нашої країни. Найбільш такого Важкого на фронті – це бачити смерті друзів, побратимів, знайомих, товаришів. І особливо важко бачити, коли гинуть 
мирні люди, коли гинуть цілими сім'ями чоловіки, жінки, діти. Дуже важко дивитися на зруйновані будівлі і уявляти, що сплять там цілі сім'ї, лягають спати, мами укладають своїх діток, співають їм колоскові, а на ранок вони можуть не прокинутися. Це біль, з яким ти живеш все життя. Я нікому не бажаю такого страху, бо війна – це найстрашніше, що може бути в нашому житті. Ну а ще, знаєте, хочеться підтримати наших військовослужбовців. І сьогодні була така ситуація, вони попросили у нас хліба. У них є все, є продукти харчування, завдяки, в тому числі, допомоги ваших дружніх країн. Не вистачає трохи техніки, але також ми з цим справляємося. А попросила хліб домашнього просто тому, що він нагадує їм про домівку. Ну, такі речі дуже важливі. Треба пам'ятати про те, що ми люди, що всі ми хочемо жити мирно, цивілізовано. І що ми не повинні руйнувати один одному сім'ї, будинки, територію, країни. Я дякую всім за підтримку України. Слава Україні! Україна буде жити, живе і ми переможемо. Героям слава! Дякую, так приємно, дякую.